In a few moments, the doctor will explain what your examinations revealed, recommend a course of care, and answer your questions. This short presentation is designed to prepare you for the doctor's explanations, helping you to maximize your results. The doctor has found areas of your spine suffering from the vertebral subluxation complex. Vertebral, meaning the spine, subluxation, meaning less than a total dislocation with nervous system compromise, and complex consisting of many parts. The vertebral subluxation complex can be the underlying cause of a variety of health-related problems. Like playing the piano, when your spine is functioning normally, each bone moves in perfect harmony with the bones above and below it. When each joint contributes properly, turning and bending is smooth and easy. Special motion x-rays of the spine show how the joints of a healthy spine work together, making it easy to look up and down or bend over to tie your shoes. When spinal joints are stuck, fixated or not moving properly, they can cause problems in other areas of the spine. Joints above or below the problem areas have to compensate, causing wear and tear to the spine. Along with improper motion, there can also be a loss of normal curves. Proper spinal curves help support the weight of the body. The neck should have a healthy forward curve. When this curve is lost, or if the neck is leaning too far forward, the ability to turn and bend can be reduced, often resulting in headaches, neck pains, and other symptoms. Interestingly, some animals like the giraffe do not have a curve in their neck. This severely impairs their ability to bend. Other animals, such as owls, have multiple curves that permit an unusual range of motion and flexibility. Clearly, proper spinal curves are important. Your chiropractic doctor has checked for these problems, plus noted any other postural deviations. The loss or increase of normal spinal curves, a low hip, a high shoulder, or a sideways curvature of the spine known as scoliosis are all signs of abnormal motion or position of spinal bones. This is referred to as spinal kinesiopathology. This can set in motion the other component parts of the vertebral subluxation complex. Imagine, all the motorcycles, cars, trucks, and buses that travel the highways of the world, all going somewhere specific to do some special or unique thing. Your nerve impulses act the same way, traveling the information superhighway of your brain, spinal cord, nerve roots, all the way down to your tiniest nerves, surfacing your fingers, toes, organs, and systems of your entire body. Like traffic, they all flow at the proper speed both to and from their destination, as long as there's no interference. Improper motion or position of your spinal bones, overuse, and injuries can all cause interference with your nervous system highway, causing too much or too little movement of the impulses that travel there. This can lead to symptoms like muscle spasms, weakness, tingling sensations, burning or even pain, often setting the stage for disease. Doctors call this neuropathophysiology, or abnormal nerve function. Muscles can be involved too. Attached to each spinal bone are layers of muscles that help support and hold each spinal bone in place while maintaining proper posture. When these muscles are healthy and equally matched, proper spinal balance can be achieved. Physical injury, repetitive motions, or changes from improper spinal function can make muscles on one side of the body stronger than the other. Some muscles can weaken and shrink, while others will become tight and overdeveloped. This can cause spasms or permanent scar tissue, changing the elasticity of the supporting muscles of the spine. That's why repeated spinal adjustments and or corrective exercises may be needed to help retrain and strengthen these damaged supporting muscle groups. Doctors refer to this as myopathology or abnormal muscle function. When there is an injury to the spine, supportive soft tissues like tendons, ligaments, and discs are often involved. They can react like bruises, sunburns, or sprained ankles with a rise in temperature and a release of chemical toxins at the site of injury. Similar to squeezing a water balloon, the pulpy disc material between each spinal bone can bulge or herniate. Ligaments and tendons can stretch or tear. Like a serious sprain, the resulting inflammation can be painful, causing swelling that directly affects surrounding joints and adjacent nerve tissues. Doctors refer to this soft tissue damage as histopathology. With stress or injury to spinal joints, the body can respond as it does to a broken bone. Like the buildup of rust in an unused hinge or mineral deposits in a cave, calcium can be deposited on adjacent bone surfaces. If proper motion is not restored, affected spinal bones can eventually fuse together. Doctors call this subluxation degeneration. Notice the forward curve and equal disc spacing between each spinal bone. The spinal cord is enclosed here and nerve roots exit from between each joint on both sides. When the spine is injured, there is often a loss of normal curves, causing misalignment and malfunction. This degeneration process can occur at any joint level of the spine. 
Soft tissue inflammation, nerve dysfunction, and disc damage often accompany this condition. Doctors refer to this as phase one. If ignored or left untreated, the spine can degenerate into phase two, where adjacent joint surfaces thicken, roughen, and bone spurs begin to form. The body will continue to deposit calcium to help splint these unstable joints. Function and range of motion decrease if this progressively worsening condition goes unchecked. In phase three, the body deposits enough abnormal bony growth to fuse the unstable joints. Like some cancers or heart disease, pain or obvious symptoms may still not be present. Chiropractic care at this late stage is more focused on minimizing the negative effects commonly associated with these types of chronic problems. Whether you're seeking relief from obvious symptoms or adopting a wellness approach to better health, chiropractic offers three stages of care. The first type is initial intensive care, also referred to as pain relief or symptomatic care. The purpose of more frequent visits over the first days or weeks is to help you reduce your most obvious symptoms. The second is rehabilitative or stabilization care. With the most obvious symptoms gone, visit frequency is often reduced, while the focus changes to strengthening the supportive structures of the spine, helping to restore your health to its highest potential. The third type of care consists of regular chiropractic adjustments, like regular visits to the dentist or the pediatrician for well baby checkups. They are designed to detect and correct little problems before they become serious. This is called wellness or elective care with one primary goal in mind, results. Chiropractic is based on teamwork. Get involved, ask questions, keep your appointments, follow your doctor's recommendations. Doing so can help you achieve the results you want and avoid a needless relapse. Better yet, share your positive experiences with others. Help them to understand what you've learned about chiropractic.